The simplest explanation is that it came from Siberia. And although this principle of parsimony in science states that the simplest explanation is preferred, that explanation is not necessarily the correct one. It is, however, the explanation accepted by science until additional data refute it. The data collected to date, when considered in the context of the principles and limitations of population genetics, do not exclude the possibility of other gene sources not detected in the limited sampling of extant populations. One or more relatively small populations now extinct or genetically swamped out in the gene pool of the Western Hemisphere could have existed but are no longer evident. The limitations on the potential for data collection mean that some hypotheses of Native American origin simply cannot be tested by DNA analysis. While the singular assumption or interpretation that all modern Native Americans are directly in the descendants of the dominant of the moral peoples may be set aside by modern molecular evidence, it is a very different matter to take the additional step to assert that the DNA data refute the claim of the Book of Mormon to be a historical document. Such a conclusion ignores the complex relationships described in the Book of Mormon and the limitations of the sample genetic data. Now it is, it is likely that uh, it is uh, likely that scientific data will be forthcoming to resolve the question empirically. It is unlikely that it will be forthcoming one way or the other. The necessary experiment simply cannot be designed that would refute the historicity of the Book of Mormon as the record of a small population, small intermingled population, on the basis of DNA studies of population genetics. Just to suppose for a moment we could identify a Lehigh gene marker. Uh, for, uh, through some uh, vagary of, of uh, random inheritance that uh, such a marker persists. First of all, how would you recognize it? And second of all, to what would you compare it? The gene pool of Jerusalem, 600 BC, no longer exists. It's scattered, uh, scattered abroad and that population as an entity is no longer to be sampled. Um, on top of this, uh, there's a, just a representation of Babylonian captivity, first of all, and then, of course, the scattering of the Jews in uh, the Roman period. Um, it's important to recognize the principles that, that operate on the dynamics of populations. One of these is uh, a bottleneck effect or a founder effect. Founder effect simply being a special case of a bottleneck. Uh, in which the population is tremendously restricted, thereby eliminating or, or narrowing the diversity of, of genes expressed. The extraction of Lehi and his family, and Ishmael and his family from, from Jerusalem, uh, was in effect a bottleneck. Their transplantation to the New World was a founder event, placing a small subset of genetic diversity within the larger gene pool of the Western Hemisphere. Another principle that is important to bear in mind is that of genetic drift. And that is in small, well, it was first taking large populations with random mating and so forth, uh, essentially going back to your, your biology course in the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equation that uh, all else being equal, that in large populations, frequencies of genes will basically maintain a status quo, will maintain an equilibrium from generation to generation, unless selection pressures or evolutionary um, factors are at play in the population. But consider a very small population. I let me back up here for a second. I guess that doesn't let me back up. Um, what this shows, this is just a, this is actual data of a small sample of, of stoneflies reproducing uh, and tracing individual lineages, tracing gene frequencies within, within individual lineages. In the preceding slide, what you saw was the proportions of the dominant and recessive allele stay about the same. And that was in a, a much larger population of, I think it was, uh, I can't remember the number now, it was 500 individuals in each lineage. 
compare, these are populations of 25 individuals in each of these lineages represented by a line. And you can see the dramatic changes that take place in a very short period of time. In 35 generations, in the, the bottom lineages, uh, the dominant allele is lost altogether. It becomes ex gone, extinct, extirpated. So trans uh, translating this or extrapolating this to a small founder population, such as Lehi's colony, we can see that, uh, that it's very likely that the genetic diversity uh, drifted uh, markedly. OK. My of DNA and Y chromosome DNA revealed just a tiny slice of family history. If we look at, in this case, this is uh, Trent Stevens' uh, genealogy. Here he is, right? Down the, on the uh, far left. Uh, the Y chromosome is inherited paternally. So Trent's Y chromosome reflects his genetic legacy as passed down from the uppermost cascade of, of, uh, of male members of his pedigree. The mitochondrial DNA, on the other hand, is strictly maternally inherited. And so his mitochondrial DNA is inherited, represents the legacy along the lowermost <coughs> tier of maternal progenitors. Now, we, for fun, pose the hypothetical, what if one of his uh, pioneers, pioneer ancestors, uh, uh, took a, uh, a Native American to wife? And we sampled Trent's DNA, he would group with, uh, we sampled uh, Trent's mitochondrial DNA, he would group with Native Americans, ignoring the 99% of his Northern European genetic legacy. So the point is that the, the genes, the genes are, uh, are extremely important in the development and, uh, and the unfolding of our, of our physical uh, natures. But on the other hand, the mechanism of inheritance are much more complicated than we often think. The, the archaic ideas of bloodlines, this idea that, that uh, the essence of our being is somehow transmitted from generation to generation by particles in the blood is, is a, an outmoded idea, um, one of, of uh, blending inheritance, that we're a mixture of, of all of the uh, genetic characteristics of our ancestors. That's not the case at all. Uh, instead, we have very biased representation in our, in our current genetic makeup that may, um, that may over-represent one particular lineage and under-represent another. As a result of this random nature of inheritance and the extremely small probabilities that exist for inheriting any identifiable genetic material from a distant, particular distant ancestor, we predict that finding a genetic marker for some given ancestor, such as, the, as Father Israel or Father Lehi, will be very unlikely. The spreading of Israelite genes throughout the, the world is apparently part of God's plan. Other than his promise to Abraham, however, we have little insight as to the reason for that. In light of what we now know about inheritance, we can be quite certain that finding the leaven in the bread will be next to impossible. It's extremely unlikely we'll ever identify the children of Lehi using genetic techniques. Now, one example that has been uh, raised is uh, the Cohen marker, the Cohen factor. This is a particular gene uh, mutation on the Y chromosome that occurred in, um, in uh, or that, that occurs in, or is present in, rather, in the uh, rabbinical priestly lineage and it's passed down uh, in paternally. Uh, and it is present in very high percentages in uh, the, uh, these uh, male members of the Levitical tribe, particular members priestly of the, these priestly lineages. It's also been pointed out that uh, the example of the Lemba, a, a group of, of South African blacks that laid claim to original extraction from, uh, from Israel uh, to South Africa. What's interesting about this is that there were a number of clans of this group 
and uh, they, their oral traditions did speak of this uh, of this uh, journey southward, and they had some uh, rather distorted uh, practices that uh, seemed to be of a Hebrew origin. But on the surface, they looked like black South Africans. They pretty much acted otherwise like black South Africans. The, uh, uh, so the modern tools of molecular genetics were, were applied to this question. And there are a number of clans, I think about six or seven clans. Of those clans, one clan had uh, in significant proportions the Cohen marker, which appeared to substantiate their claim. 